Do you want to clear the air and clearly condemn the attack in Hamas today? No, I want to clear the record. First of all, the Palestinian Authority is not what represents the Palestinian people. It's the PLO. Do you want to clear the air and condemn the PLO. Uh, 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 de designate the PLO from the terrorist list in the U.S. Uh, Congress. But they on know, that specific know, condemnation, it would just be a very no. quick answer. Uh, 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 and uh, allow me, Margaret, because I watched your interview with the Israeli ambassador, and he said two things that are very important. He said, uh, uh, you know, those are unintended consequences. Well, he had a chance. The Palestinian ambassador to the United Kingdom refusing to condemn Hamas terrorists as pro-Palestinian protesters hits the streets across the globe, including, as you can see right there, London on Saturday. Speaking of London, joining us right now from London is Piers Morgan, the host of Piers Morgan Uncensored on Fox Nation. Piers, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Steve. Uh, this guy had it really easy. Just a yes or a no. The correct answer is yes. He'd like to condemn the the mass murder of innocent civilians, but he didn't do it. Why? You know, I've interviewed a lot of pro-Palestinian voices on my show Uncensored in the last month, including that ambassador, and I've asked all of them that question. Because to me, you can absolutely say that you're concerned about the plight of the Palestinians, both before and after what happened on October the 7th. That's completely normal and a completely human reaction. Sure. However, however, if you're not prepared to condemn that appalling terror attack, then I'm afraid I don't want to hear you asking for condemnation of anything else. So I start with that question. And his inability there, repeatedly, to just give a straight, of course I condemn it, it was terrible, is very telling. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing this in these demonstrations now all over the world. A lot of the people demonstrating are indeed genuine peace protesters, and I respect right. that. In democracy, you're allowed to demonstrate peacefully. However, they're getting infiltrated with more and more people who are blatantly pro-Hamas, and Hamas is a terror organization. Right. So when you stand there with your placard supporting Hamas, or you chant jihad, or from the river to the sea, which we all know means the eradication of Israel, which is the stated mission of Hamas, mm -hmm. then you are promoting and supporting and endorsing terrorism right. and what happened on October the 7th. And that is completely unacceptable. Uh, you know, Piers, as we were looking at some of the video of the protests uh, there in London on Saturday, great big uh, protests in Washington, D.C. They're estimating perhaps as many as 100,000 were marching. Uh, and in addition to from the river to the sea that they chanted here, they also chanted uh, F Joe Biden. So what were they, in addition to the, from the river to the sea, what else were they cheering and, and chanting there in London? Oh, lots of abuse for our prime minister, Rishi Sunak, who has also stood up for Israel's right to defend itself. And indeed, not just a right, but in my estimation, it has a fundamental duty to protect his people from an organization whose spokesman only last week reiterated that they want to do what happened on October the 7th again and again and again and again. So those people marching for the Palestinians, I get it. I get why people are concerned about the ferocity of Israel's response. But I also ask them a simple question. Do you think Hamas should stay in power in Gaza after what they did? And if, as most people answer, well, no, probably not, then in that case, how do you get rid of them? And nobody has another answer. Right. You know, they live deliberately amongst their own population, who they themselves have repressed now for 17 years or so. And they will continue to do that. They spent a lot of the money that's been given to them, supposedly to try and make the Gaza uh, a more prosperous place on uh, just terrorizing Israelis. And now on October the 7th, they did what they have warned they would do if they ever got the chance. And that is commit an effective genocide on the people of Israel. So these protests, we've got one, for example, on Saturday. Day coming in London. Now, it's a very special day in London on Saturday. It's Armistice Day. It's the day we celebrate the end of World mm -hmm. War One. Right. It's also a day that forms part of a weekend of Remembrance Sunday and the Cenotaph in London, where we commemorate and remember and honour all those who lost their lives serving this country in war around the world. And you know, the idea there are going to be huge mobs of people uh, going around, some of whom will be promoting a terror organization, mm -hmm. as we're supposed to be celebrating and honoring the memories of those who died in conflict against people like the right. Nazis, uh, makes my stomach churn. And that is why you are wearing a poppy today, live from London. Absolutely. And, and yeah. we have Veterans Day in this country. Uh, Piers, yeah. thank you very much for joining us. Thanks a lot, guys. All right. 
I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.